How's it going everybody? It's me with my bro Miles here, um, due to popular demand, and this is somewhat of a vlog, but it's more of a response to a TV show that I've been watching for a long time. A TV show that seems tailor-made to piss me off, because it is by far... It's one of the worst shows I think ever aired on Spike TV, and uh... Okay, it's called The Deadliest Warrior, and I'm going to introduce the concept of the show for those of you who aren't familiar with this, because I don't think many people watch this one, but uh, it, it's, got a, it's got kind of a cool premise, you know, it's, it's, kind of like, it, it, it's kind of like some guy sitting around in a bar somewhere, and they, they start talking about, like, who do you think would win? Attila the Hunter, Alexander the Great, I guess, well, nerdy people in bars maybe, but uh, you set up this scenario, and so... What this show is purported to do is to compare and contrast the the weapons and the, the weapons and armor of these warriors to determine who would win in a one on one fight. And uh, I got a lot of problems with this show, and uh, I feel compelled to dismantle it piece by piece. But to start off, I'd like to talk about uh, the 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 people they have that are in charge of hosting this show. There's like, there's like a cast of characters. And uh, I'm going to let you talk in a minute, I know. Um, th there's three people who run this show. And the first person, the guy who seems to be the ringleader, is probably the guy who pisses me off the most. And it's this big, chunky, I think he's a former Special Forces uh, soldier... He, 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 he's, he's like a big football player, like that kind of jock that you just, you grew to hate. He's this pretty boy, he's huge, and he's, I don't know what he does. They call him a biomedical engineer, but okay. that seems like a fancy term. It's kind of like calling people grips on a, on a movie set, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> grips are highly trained professionals. I mean, I... Trust me, I actually researched into being a group. But yeah, this guy, <laughs> I, I don't know what's up with this guy, because his only purpose on the show seems to be... I, I don't know what. He, like, he, he just kind of sits off to the side as they do these tests, and he, uh, he's like, this ought to really hurt. Or like when something explodes or something gets hit really hard with like a mace, he goes, oh! <laughs> and he's, but he, all he does is he just kind of stands off to the side, trying to look knowledgeable about things that are far beyond his ken. You know, like just he's like, we got all these explosives, we're gonna blow shit up with them. It's gonna be awesome. And like, that, like that's his only job. Okay, the, the, but yeah, his only role is to go. Oh, that looks like it hurt. The second guy, probably my. Uh, well, let me let me let me save that one for last. The second guy is the computer engineer Max Geiger. Which is, that's like a comic book name. I envy that name, Max Geiger. And, he almost um, seems like an anime villain with the shiny glasses. And yeah. he's trying to conquer the world. And in actuality, the entire show apparently centers on Max. Because everything that they do, all the data that they collect, or allegedly collect, goes into this program by Slytherin Studios... Where he, he enters all this shit in, and then he hits a button, and then you get, like, sucked into the Matrix. And then you see what the simulation... So he runs these simulations a thousand times to determine winners. And depending on who won the most simulations out of those thousand, that's who, that's who wins. You know, that's, that's the winner. What but, I love is they never explain how it happens. No. It, it, it's just like... It's all science and computer wizardly and magic and yeah, all that stuff. It, it's <laughs> like it's just like he puts a, he pushes a button and even the announcer says like this high tech program is really it, really complex. It's so and shit. far above your heads, your puny brains. It would are take not a scientist think. to explain. <laughs> take a scientist to understand. And I don't understand why they keep pimping the Slytherin Studios anyway. It's not are we going to be buying this or something? Yeah, like but that? this program could be anything. He could just be like playing Civ three, you know, and like like just who would win Spartans or the Mujahideen, and he, he, he puts these armies against each other, and then he just, ooh, oh, they win, and you're just like, uh-huh, bullshit. Um, it's, it's GURPS, or Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what the science is, they're rolling D20s. So it's, it's completely obfuscated, what's going on with this program. And so, Max, he literally has no role in this entire show. He's given an equal vote on, like, what weapons are better than the others, but he does nothing. Like, he, I, he's just there because he has a laptop, it seems like, you know. Um, so, but they'll, they'll do these things, they'll test weapons, and they'll go, what do you think, Max? And he's like, 
that knife is bigger. And then, and so, uh, uh, by the way, Max, he, he bugs me, like, he, he kind of looks like the kind of nerd who, he, he wears a sports jacket, but he also wears, like, uh, logo tees, like he got from uh, Rotten Cotton or something like that. So you'll see him wear, like, a concert t-shirt with a sports jacket over it, and he looks like the biggest jackass. Like, if you're going to wear a sports jacket, just get, like, a one-color one shirt, and like, you know, it's like a, he's got. It's <laughs> a strange, like, nerd chic he's going for, yeah. where he's combining style with retro 80s shirts and that sort of stuff, and he's trying to look cool, but yeah. he's not. So he doesn't know anything about anything, about at least what's going on in the show, but it seems like he's only there because, like, I got this program, and it's my show, okay? So, third guy, my favorite. I love this man. I love this guy. I forget his name. I don't think anybody knows his name, actually, but he's he's a UFC uh, ring no, doctor, like a trauma doctor. He's a trauma surgeon also. Okay. He used to be. And so he's he, his, his sole purpose in this show is to bring some medical expertise to this show, but that's not really what he does. What he does is they'll do this thing where they're like, and now we test the Naginata, the bladed staff weapon of the samurai. And so they bring this Japanese guy in, and they stab a pig carcass with the Naginata. And then the, uh, the trauma surgeon, he snaps on his gloves, and he looks over the wound, and he goes, Yeah, that'd kill you. That'd hurt. That would hurt a lot. You'd die in about five minutes. There's no... He's really not using his expertise. Like, it, like when, when it boils right down to it, People take these weapons and they do the most vicious, vile things to people. Yeah. Like they'll cut off heads or they'll take a giant 50 caliber and blast you through the heart. You don't need to be an expert to do this. That's why it looks so moronic when you see this, this person who is a legitimate doctor yeah. who does this for a living. And I'm sure he's very great at his job, but he looks like a tool when he comes up to a body with his head going off and going... He's dead. Yeah, all he does, like, I, I've lost count, like, every time they test a weapon, he goes up there, snaps his gloves on, sticks his fist in the wound, and goes, wow, he's really dead. Or, you know, he'll, he'll look at a gunshot wound and goes, that guy's shot in the heart, he's dead. He'll have a ballista round through his chest, and he'll go, he'll die. That'll kill you. And so that's, like, his only role. <laughs> okay, there, I've actually left out the fourth character, and that character is David Wenham who is the narrator for everything that goes on. And he's, like, the guy who tells you, like, the actual educational stuff. So, like, when they're talking about Spartans versus... Uh, who the fuck did the Spartans fight? The Apaches, was it? Or uh, ninjas? Was it ninjas? Okay. the Spartans fought. Well, the, the Spartans fought, like, two guys. It was... The, they, they did the first round, and then they did, like, the finals round where the Spartans fought the, the winners of the previous rounds. And it was, yeah. like... I, I, it was, it was, let's just say Spartan versus ninjas. No, it was ninja. the Samurai. Samurai? Spartan versus Samurai? So, David Wenham, they'll cut to these re like recreated footage of like actors dressed as these warriors, and David Wenham, whose voice is always super smooth and sexy, he's, he's talking like the character he was in 300, where he's like, and the Spartans, deadly warriors of, of days of yore. He's telling the mythic battle of the, the samurai. Trained for combat at an early age, they were thrown off cliffs if they were deemed inferior. Trained with deadly swords and bows. Their shield was impenetrable. And so, like, the reason you watch this show, the reason I watch this show is because I'm just digging the hell out of David Wenham. Because he's just that awesome. Where he's just talking like, the ninja, master of stealth and assassination, versus the pirate, deadly and cunning warrior of the Caribbean. He's no match for the true Spartan warrior. <laughs> and then, like, I, I always love when they start talking about, like, he's like, Al Capone, dirtiest player of the Chicago underworld. Bootlegger and bastard, <laughs> and so like I always like that when I I actually do like mystery science theater riffs on this like in the David Wenham voice. So like I always start describing things like uh, I'm like Mega Man, <laughs> deadliest robot in the Maverick verse, and like with a giant arm cannon interchangeable with nine other deadly weapons. He can jump and teleport and summon his robot dog, and that's his new weapon, Rush, robot dog and giant trampoline. I don't know. But yeah, David Wenham. And so, this show is horrible. It is like, the, you don't even need to be a scientist to look at their testing methodology and the decisions that they make. Whether you think one guy is superior to another, and I almost always disagree with them, and even when I do agree with their assessments, I 
don't agree with how they reach that conclusion, but like their testing methodology is so bad and so inaccurate, and it leaves out so much that the there's no science here. They they pretend like it's hard science. That's what upsets me, is it pretends that it's it's real scientific work and we're really boiling down the science as to why this is so deadly. But when you get right down to it, like Mythbusters Mythbusters it has it has loose science. It's not it's not rocket science as it were, but it, it it's it's real science applied they to test situations. The, they test their stuff way more and they test it rigorously and testably yes. with with empirical data with with a with a use scientific method, you know? They do. But with with deadliest warrior let's just no. let's just set aside the notion like the very thesis of the show that we're taking characters out of time and space and then putting them together to fight to the actually let's not do that. Because the, the the very premise of the show falls apart when you start doing simple things like uh, they, they, when they say like a Spartan versus a ninja. Okay, let's just take that premise. One, I'm not saying this would never happen because it wouldn't happen, but let's just say that in, in this fictional verse we had Spartans and, and ninjas fighting each other. You never fight a Spartan. You never fight a ninja. Like you like. One on one, you don't fight a ninja. The whole point of the historical ninja was that they were assassins, and you didn't see them coming. They wore black, so you didn't see them. Their weapons were concealed. They weren't great weapons. In fact, they, most of them were converted farm implements. They were not great weapons, but when you sneak up behind a guy and you shove it into his esophagus, it'll probably kill him. Um, that was one of the things that, in the very first episode, it was one of the things that, it was like Apaches versus... Uh, uh, a gladiator. Yeah. And uh, the Apache was the one that even brought it up. It, he's going, I don't even know why we're talking about this as if it's a one on one fair fight. The Apaches, uh, by their very nature, do not fight are, fair. Do not fight fair. They ambush people. They, and of course, they take people off guard. In, in that episode, the chunkhead, the, the, the biomedical expert guy, his one of his first statements was. Like, I don't know how we're going to deal with this one. Gladiators, they were trained to kill. They were trained only for combat and death. And I'm like, they were not. They were entertainers. They were the professional wrestlers of ancient Rome. Now, they did hurt each other quite badly, in fact. And sometimes they did die. But they were not trained to kill. Not always. In maybe low-rent coliseums they were trained to kill, but not in this case. But like with the Spartans. that's like I, I always came back to the Spartans, because the whole point of the Spartan army was the fact that they fought in such an unusual style called the shield wall, and they would stab over shields. They would have a wall of shields, and they would stab over that. You never fought one Spartan. There was no point to fighting one Spartan. And, and it was something... Uh, it, it upset me because they, they did another one where they did... They pared down all their winners from the first season to yeah. find who's the deadliest, deadliest, deadliest warrior of them all, deadliest. And they're just tossing away people at certain points because, oh, these people don't have armor, therefore they're out. Yeah. Like, they threw away, the again, the Apache. They go, well, the Apache doesn't have armor, so therefore they're out. But another thing they did was they separated different classes. They separated people by technological eras. People before that, and after gunpowder. Before power. and after gunpowder. Well, what upset me is the Apache fought people with gunpowder. They were called the U.S. Army. They were called the U.S. Army. They fought people on a technological level, advanced way ahead of them, and yet they're not on the same level to fight with people with bows, arrows, and swords. I'd, I'd, just, I'd like to ask General Custer... How he fared against the uh, the Indians? Because <laughs> I well, wait, you can't, can you? Because he got a fucking tomahawk between the eyes. Jesus. The samurai fought people with gunpowder. They and had people with gunpowder. They, uh, Ashigaru, whatever, however you say it, they had they had rifle troopers. They were they were accurate as crap. I mean, they weren't accurate at all. But when you had three hundred of them aiming in your direction, you were going to kill some people. They had, and and the, the, uh, that's that leads me to my next point is they uh, they compare the weaponry, but they never even spare a thought to fighting tactics, uh, strength in numbers, and uh, landscape that they favor. 
So the very purpose, they, they never take into account the shield wall of the Spartans. They never took into account the fact that samurai were often mounted warriors, that Apache would uh, engage in guerrilla, guerrilla fighting tactics, that the Irish Republican Army rarely fought in a stand-up fight, or even street to street. Like the IRA, they were notorious for bombing people with with pipe bombs, nail bombs, uh, cafe bombs. They would, they did fight, but I'm not. They, they just they were not the kind of guys to organize in small units and go in direct military action. Um, and that's the way with all sorts of stuff. So like when they they pitted a pirate against a medieval warrior, I was like, okay, when do you fight a pirate? And further, a pirate. You you never see a pirate like just walking around. The, when a pirate attacks you, he's got like sixty other pirates, and you know what he's riding on? A pirate ship. So when like when, can, can we at least concede the fact that when a pirate sails up to you, his gun may not be that accurate, but he's got a ship with like a dozen cannons. <laughs> so like, and, and a knight has a horse. He has a squire. He has all sorts of weapons. Um and. Just, that does lead to one of the more hilarious parts of the episode when they do finally pair off against one another. Are oh, you talking about the simulation? The simulation. Yeah. They, you see them and they, they enter it in. We go into the Matrix-like world. Actually, actually, the simulation <laughs> is my favorite part because it's actually really well done. We we hit the button and we yeah. go into a Matrix-like world and we, we see our two people. They're just strolling through yeah. the woods. Well, the, that, that was the, the first one I ever saw was the Apache versus the Gladiator, right? <laughs> and so they hit the button. I'm like, how the fuck are they going to do this? So you see the Apache and the Apache's strolling around and all of a sudden he's like... And he's, they cut to the reverse angle and you see a fucking Gladiator. And the Gladiator's got, like, he's got all his armor on. He's got that big helmet. He's got this net and a trident. And he, he sees the Apache and he's like... <laughs> and the Apache's like, what the fuck are you? It's all he needs. <laughs> it's and, good to go. And the Gladiator's like, you! <laughs> and the Apache's like, all right. <laughs> Boing, and shoots his bow. And then they start fighting. But it's a really well choreographed fight scene, and you really get into it. So, like, the last ten minutes of that show actually kick a lot of ass. <laughs> it's like... That, that's all it is, though. Like, you have one was William Wallace versus Shaka, Shaka Zulu. Zulu. And it's another one. William Wallace is just trucking around the highlands, yeah, and here comes this African tribal warrior going, Ooh! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's just bopping around, and all of a sudden you see fucking Shaka Zulu come out of a hut or some shit, and he's like, And William Wallace is like, The fuck are you doing here? And Shaka Zulu's like, yeah, uh, and Wallace is like, I got a claymore, and like, and they they just go out, they go to town. My favorite one was they actually kind of had a story. Um, the last one I just saw was Al Capone versus the James Gang, Ver, like Al Capone's uh, mobsters versus the J Jesse James and his, his gangsters, right? So they hit the simulation. And I was actually kind of like, how the fuck are they going to do this thing where, like, Jesse James runs into, like, Al Capone's mobsters? Like, what is Al Capone going to do? Like, who the fuck is this guy? And, like, I, I, actually, the way I thought they were going to do it was, like, they're going to be in, like, a, a, a speakeasy casino, right? And, like, Al Capone's, like, playing poker with his dudes. All of a sudden, the James gang, like, kicks the door open to the speakeasy, shoots the bouncer in the face, and is like, all right, y'all, reach for the sky. Money or your life. And Al Capone is like, boys... Handle this. And no, 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 but what they do is you cut the simulation and you go to like an old West museum. And just the James gang is like poking around this old West museum like they just stepped out of a time machine. Or like they're kind of like feeling their clothes like, are you alive? It's like Night at the Museum. Yeah, yeah like the wax dummies came to life and Jesse James was like, all right. And so they start smashing open exhibit cases, getting their guns out like, just like old times, let's do some crimes! And so they're loading their guns up, they're getting Winchester rifles and shit like Meanwhile, that. Meanwhile, Al Capone is driving up and he thinks to himself, Hey, this Natural History Museum yeah. might be a nice joint to hit up. Yeah, he, he, sees a, <laughs> he sees a Natural History Museum, he stops his car and he's like, Hey boys, let's go check this out and see if they want any protection. And Booze, so, prostitution... That's the museum. He just he's like or either that or he's like I feel like taking in a little culture. <laughs> and so the the fucking Capone gang bursts in the room and the James gang is like 
shit! And they start shooting in the, like, they start whipping out Thompson shove machine guns. And they're like, ah! Like that. And it's, it's a really awesome fight. I was like, this kicks ass. And, like, fucking Capone is whipping out hand grenades and throwing them. And I'm like, this kicks so much ass. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, I, I, I think that leads me to uh, the whole testing methodology that I, I bitched about so much. Not only do they, they, they uh, let's just forget the fact that they, at some point I kind of had to accept they're not doing tactics. They're not doing terrain. They're not talking about the strengths of their very fighting styles. You know, they are purely going weapon to weapon, weapon versus armor. I've had many discussions and made them go, well, mm -hmm. it, it's not about all that. They're just testing yeah. which has the most lethal weapon. Yeah. And I can go, okay, but even at that point, you're still messing it up. You're yeah. failing. So they never talk about the the. They often they they tend to pair it off into short, medium, long range weapons. Okay, like short to short, medium to medium, and then they do like a special weapon if they had any kind of specialty. And so, what they do is they often mistake entirely the very purpose and function of the weapon that they're talking about. For instance, with the James Gang and Al Capone, they uh. I think their special weapon, actually, was the Winchester rifle for the James Gang. And for, for Capone, it was the pineapple hand grenade, or the pineapple bomb. So they do this thing, and um, they're like, they, they take this mafia guy, and they throw a pineapple bomb through a window, and they blow it up, and they count how many dummies were seriously harmed by the explosion. And they counted, like, four. Like, all four were just blown to hell. And so then they go, well... What's, what's with the Winchester? That's a gun. That's not a bomb. And they go, yeah, I could take out four guys in the same amount of time. And so they have the, they have the cowboy get his Winchester, and he shoots four guys in five seconds. He, the, by the way, this guy was like an expert, like championship, world championship marksman and like gunslinger type guy. So he, he shoots the four guys, and they're like, wow, he took out all four guys faster than the hand grenade did. Winchester's better. And I'm like, It was amazing to me that they actually proved that the Winchester rifle was a better weapon than the hand grenade. With and 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 um, th that that was one where the in particular they were choosing better weapons, but they were choosing the better weapons for all the wrong reasons. Like uh, just for, okay with the Winchester and the hand grenade, two entirely different weapons with two way different applications. You would never use a like a Winchester in the same circumstance that you would employ a fucking hand grenade. Right? So, especially, they, they, they compared the Thompson submachine gun to the Colt Peacemaker. And so, they, they chose the Thompson, but the reason they chose the Thompson was, which is the correct answer, by the way, just because of sheer rate of fire, but they do this thing, and this is what they often do with ranged weaponry. They do this thing where they'll set up like an obstacle course or a target range. Where they'll be like, okay, you're going to run through this maze, okay? And we've set up five targets that look like gunmen. And you're going to run through this maze, and you're going to shoot and kill as many targets as you can, as accurately as you can, in the shortest amount of time. So they'll give the peacemaker to this gunslinger, and they're like, okay, man, go. So the guy gets on his horse, and he rides down the course, and he shoots his gun at all five guys, and he shoots them all dead. Because he's an expert fucking marksman. You know, he's trained for years on how to shoot from a horse. And so they're like, wow, you got four guys. And so then they go, they go to the, the mafia guy and they hand him a Thompson submachine gun. And they're like, okay, I want you to drive past in your car and shoot these targets. And so they do that. And then, sure, he shoots, he shoots all of them because he emptied a fucking machine gun their way. And they're like, wow, the, the Thompson's better. Um, it's because they're testing the operator, yeah. not the instrument. You can hand anyone... A Stradivarius. That doesn't mean they're gonna play Mozart. Yeah. It means they're gonna butcher a Stradivarius. By the same token, take for example, they did two sniper rifles. Yeah, yeah. And there's something that this you can made, test about two sniper rifles. This made you so mad. I remember this. You because raised. for one, they test the range at 75 yards. Pretty much every single rifle can go 100 yards. One, one rifle went 750 meters. The other one can shoot up to a thousand meters. Which one is better? When a guy's shooting you from a click away, <laughs> one 
is a bolt action. The other is semi-automatic. It cuts down on time when you have to shoot. And they never think to employ a they, test for semi-automatic speed firing for accuracy in the bolt action, how much it throws off your accuracy, uh, at it, any kind of range. It cuts down on speed. And 75 yards for a rifle that shoots 1,000 uh, you, meters? You can test. You can also test accuracy with a rifle in, in its grouping. Some, some are, you can have smaller groupings, and it depends on the rifling, on uh, how much variation you get on the grain of the bullet. But that that's putting more science into it than they do. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just how many people can this person shoot at a range of 75 meters? And sure enough, the crappier shot determines which is the worst yeah. rifle. So here, let, let me let me put you an example and see if you can figure out the flaw in the testing methodology here. So they they take the uh, the what was it the uh, green berets or uh, Marines. I think they took, what was it, the fucking Spetsnaz versus uh, Green Berets. Green Berets. So they do this thing where they're comparing their handguns. The Spetsnaz handgun versus the Green Beret handgun. So they do this obstacle course with the maze. They have the, they have the Green Beret guy run through the maze, shoot the, shoot the bad targets, not shoot the friendly targets. And then they have the Spetsnaz guy run through the, run through the maze, shoot the bad targets, not shoot the, the, the friendly targets. The, the, uh, the Spetsnaz guy, I think, missed one. He, he missed a target, or he didn't shoot it lethally, like he shot it in the hand, or something like that. And they go, well, the Green Beret killed all five of his guys, and the Spetsnaz guy killed four. Green Beret gun's better. And I'm like, that is so wrong that it proved nothing about the gun. Nothing. All you proved was that one guy is a better shot than the other, or uh, not even that, you proved in that one circumstance, he hit more targets. And there's some instances where you can prove that a gun is more reliable yes. or not, whether it can jam or not, whether it, it does have better accuracy or not. A, a Derringer doesn't have shit for accuracy. You, you shoot it and you pray it lands where you point it at, whereas you'll get some with very great rifling and you can shoot tight groups. That is something you can test. It, it's it, it's, they're, it's they're testing it, the operator. It, it's, it has nothing to do with the gun itself. And it's remarkable. You'd think like, oh, they only do that once. They they only do that once. No, they do that like every single time with a firearm or even like a bow or something like that. The testing method is shooting balls yeah, full the, of blood. Th they'll shoot like a water balloon, and if. The guy, one guy has a longbow and one guy has a crossbow, and one guy happens to hit one more water balloon than the other guy, they go, well, that weapon's better. It's... What I also love is phenomenal. even even bombs. Like, I remember one time they, they tested the yeah, uh, Irish, I, Irish uh, nail bomb versus the, the, hand uh, the hand grenade. I and raved so, about this forever. So they set up this scenario, and they set it up like this cafe or something like that, and they had the, the, the nail bomb set up, and they go, okay, let's, let's see how much shrapnel hits all these different people. And it blows up, everyone gets nails in them, and you go, okay, I, I can see that. So what would you think they would do with the hand grenade? Using science, you would try to repeat or test in the same yeah, conditions. Yeah, replicate the, replicate the experiment in the exact same conditions, changing only the explosive device. Exactly. What do they do? They put it in a dishwasher, and, and they see it blow up. There's no consistency at all in the testing. What does that prove? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Um, oh, jeez, I had, I had something, and it completely blew my mind. Um, what else? Um, oh, I remember. They, they only test lethality. Uh, I remember one where they uh, SWAT versus the uh, GSG-9, yes. the, the German anti-terrorist group. Um, and so they start testing weapons like the Taser. And they were completely unimpressed by the Taser. They were like, uh, oh, that doesn't kill you. No, they love the Taser. Oh, they, they, lo the, oh, they did Taser Shockwave, the, the special SWAT deployment weapon that, that is meant for like riot suppression. They love that. Although I have seen several cases where they weren't impressed by non-lethal means at all, like pepper spray or something like that, where they were just like, it doesn't kill you, it pisses you off, it doesn't kill you. It completely, again, ignoring the fact that it's meant for a very special purpose. Um, but what, what made me really, really upset was when they tested the, uh, 
the taser shockwave, which is meant to be a stationary device deployed in advance to where you know a group of people are going to be advancing from, basically deployed in advance of a riot. And then they tested against the GSG-9's uh, Stinger Grenade, which actually, if you've seen my Let's Plays of SWAT 4, I employ the Stinger Grenade in a, in a couple of circumstances. And actually, I don't have much luck with it. But uh, what it is, is it's basically like a, a grenade of compressed nerve, uh, not nerve gas, but uh, like CS gas, uh, it, it's, it, it's got uh, it's got rubber balls in it too. Yeah, and it's got rubber balls in it, which when the grenade blows up, are propelled at great velocity and will knock the shit out of you. So you've got like the concussive force of a flashbang, the pain submission and concussive force of the rubber balls, and you probably got some gas in there as well. And so they do this thing where they test out the taser shockwave on these targets, and they're like, wow, it hit like all five of these targets. And then they go to a completely different testing area where they set up like a room with dummies in it. And they cover the walls in, like, uh, styrofoam or, like, cork board or something like that. Yeah, it's like cork board. And they put the grenade in the middle of the room, they blow it up, and then the meathead, the, the, the fucking chunk head, goes in the room and he's like, Wow, that didn't do anything at all. Look, y you see that? There's, there's no damage anywhere. And I'm like, no shit. The weapon that's not designed to do any lasting harm didn't do any lasting harm. The fucking stinger grenade did not destroy the room, and it didn't kill anybody, which is exactly what it's designed not to do. And so, immediately, immediately, he goes, this didn't do any damage, so the taser's better. And they like, like, right there, they just wrote it off. They're like, oh, taser, better. The cop is like, well, stand in the room if you yeah. feel like it doesn't do I was do like, I, I, I was raving about this. I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you shitting me up the ass? Like, I was like, I was like, all right. I would have walked up to that guy and said, like, all right, I want you to hold this bomb in your hand, like, right here. I'm going to let it go off. And ten seconds later, I will walk in this room, handcuff your hind hands behind your back, stomp you in the balls as I leave. Try and stop me. I would have walked in that room, seen that dude weeping and clawing at his blind, fucking, dripping eyes, and just had my way with that guy, because he would have been useless. I'd be like, which weapon do you think is better now, dipshit? And I'm not saying, like, one is better than the other. They both have very distinct applications. The they're show's... not even consistent in their bullshit now. I remember this last episode. They're comparing knives. They had Al Capone mm -hmm. versus the James Gang. Yeah. And they had the Switchblade versus the Bowie Knife. And Bowie Knife is freaking huge. It's, it's like a, it's it's like a, a Crocodile Dundee, that's a knife. It's like a thing. fucking short sword, right? <laughs> yeah. And so you, you think to yourself, okay, these guys are meatheads which are impressed by... Giant sticks yeah. and things every, that are going to carve things up in a in a quick hurry. Every show in the history of this show, if the knife is bigger and heavier, it causes a more lasting wound. It causes more grave trauma, and they're all about that. So sure enough, the the mafia guy comes up and he sticks it, you know, like an ice pick. He's hitting all the vital areas. Yeah, he stabs the guy in the heart. He cuts his belly open, and they're like, "Wow, that was pretty impressive." And, and so, so the cowboy gets up and he carves up this ham like a like a hot knife through butter. Completely obliterates yeah, he, it. Yeah, he, he, he takes his pig carcass and he just obliterates this thing with the knife. Like, and at the end of it they go, well that's impressive, but the switchblade is more concealable. Switchblade wins. Switchblade wins. And I'm like, Whoop. So wait, you're <laughs> taking tactics over deadliest yeah, weapon. Yeah, that one time they were like, well tactically it's a, it's a more versatile weapon. And I was like... <laughs> and what's even funnier is they 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 always love this too. Where the, as soon as the guy destroys this pig with the Bowie knife, he goes and you can throw it too. So he goes up to like ten feet, fucking throws this knife, and it like buries this thing up to the hilt in this pig carcass. And I'm like, they love that shit. If you can fucking throw it, and they just, they were like, nah, stiletto. <laughs> I was like, are you sitting me? We were also railing about this before the how they completely missed the point of some weapons. Like we were, uh, they were doing, oh, uh, they were doing some kind of a uh, horseman riding with a bow, and they also compared that to a uh, crossbow. Yeah. It was Genghis Khan versus uh, Alexander the Great. Yeah. And Genghis tough. Khan could. <laughs> Shoot riding from horseback and arrow. 
And of course they do the same test where they they have both of them fire. And they, they find that the crossbow is inaccurate. Which for once all concede that that's something they can bring up in, a, in terms of lethality and, and useful weapon. But here's the thing. You can get any schmuck to fire a crossbow. Yeah. That's the point of the crossbow. The crossbow was a revolutionary weapon in medieval times for several reasons. One, um, it would penetrate... It was, it was basically a, a direct shot weapon that was quick to reload... Uh, it could penetrate plate mail, basically making knights completely obsolete, because anybody could fire one, and that's kind of the point. Was like it didn't you didn't have to be super strong to pull and knock an arrow for great range. All you had to have was like a lever or at least some place to post your foot and pull the drawstring, and it fired like a gun. Well, guns fire like crossbows, whatever. So, but it was it was a point and shoot weapon, meaning it was much easier to train with. You could train peasantry to fire crossbows with great accuracy in a relatively short amount of time. Even so, these weapons, once again, designed for radically different types of warfare. Genghis Khan, when he had his men shooting from horseback, had a very fast-paced, uh, mobile style of fighting, which was entirely unlike anything Alexander the Great would normally have to face. These guys, Genghis Khan's guys, were kind of ambush, circle, and de demolish, you know, while staying mobile with this thing. And, of course, they completely ignore that by not having any of them fight on horseback. But I'll, I'll completely concede the point that if you train a select group of people over a number of years, you can make them very accurate shots with a bow, more so than a person with a crossbow. But you can take 50 schmucks off the street, give them crossbows, tell them all to fire in one general area... And I guarantee you, they're gonna kill yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you're talking about when you're talking about peasantry with crossbows or, or or just any kind of bow troopers, the whole point of most of their most of the archery in like Alexander the Great's time was the fact that they would just they would shoot in an arc, and when you have like three to five hundred people shooting in an arc at a massed area, you know, with ranged out zones, with, with like a, even a ballista, like when you like, that was nothing. It was like fucking Alexander the Great had a ballista. <laughs> that was a, what do they count the ballista with? The lasso? So that was, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they were really impressed how the fact the lasso could kill you. With like the one very specific way it could possibly kill you, basically by hanging you. You know, if a guy on horseback looped a lasso around your neck and rode off at, at a gallop, yeah, it'd kill you. I'm expecting one, though, to be like, Harry S. Truman versus Hitler. I want to see... The Andrew, special weapon is the A-bomb. Andrew, ja <laughs> Andrew Jackson, he was fucking crazy. That guy was out of his mind. Um, I, I remember, I, I, I really like the Alexander the Great versus Genghis Khan. Or Attila the Hun. Was it Attila the Hun? I think, whatever. Let's say it was Attila the Hun. And I was like, I, I was really curious as how you fight Alexander the Great. How you fight Attila the Hun... One on one, and because this would never happen, like not even, not even if you had like fucking a TARDIS or something like that. <laughs> if you had a magic phone booth and you like crash them down and you're like, All right, I want you two to fight. No, 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 no. But uh, the setup for this was really amazing. I loved the fucking Alexander the Great one because you had Alexander the Great with like three guys, three, and one of them had a crossbow. One of them had like a sword. And the other guy was crewing a ballista. So, the, you see Alexander the Great, he's bopping around, and all of a sudden he's like, Look! And then they see a village. And until the Hun's, like, kicking it in this village, like, drinking milk or something like that, and he's got, like, these three Mongol dudes, or Huns, he's got these three Huns, like, sitting around him. And Alexander the, Alexander's like, check that shit out. Let's get him. And the, then the three guys are like... Ah! And they start running down the hill. The one guy with the ballista starts cranking the fucking ballista. And I'm like, he, the, the one dude with the ballista is like, boing. And of course he hits one mo uh, hundu like right in the chest. And the guy like windmills back. He's like, ah! And, I'm and, done. <laughs> yeah, and then he was like, I'm out. <laughs> I need like four guys to crew this fucking thing. Where are you guys? And so uh, Attila's like, holy shit! Get him! Both of you! And so, like, both his Hun war like warlords are like, ah! And they start attacking. One guy's got a fucking rope. And he's trying to, like, 
He's trying to entangle this dude on his horse with his rope, and the guy with the sword is like, fucking get off! <laughs> and so they start fighting, and like, and of course it boils down to like Attila the Hun and, and Alexander, they're dueling it out. Because Attila the Hun, by the way, has the Sword of Mars. And they even like, even like David Wenham, when they're describing the Sword of Mars, they're like, oh, according to legend, it was made of a metal from a meteorite. Blessed by the gods. Yeah, he's like, blessed by the gods and struck by lightning, it's a plus four holy avenger. <laughs> it's got plus four to hit and damage, plus two to armor class. Pierces through armor. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a weapon of wounding with a vorpal edge, with a snicker snack it goes. <laughs> and I'm like they were like, oh, the sword. And so this, of course, this dude brings out like a sword of Mars, and like, wow, it's magic. It's better. And so of course they're like, the, the sword fucking sword of Mars is better. Hold <sighs> <laughs> me, hold me. What was he in Lord of the Rings? Like you, I'm uh, Faramir. Faramir. Like, I'm almost expecting, like, a Lord of the Rings one where he's like, The Horn of Gondor. <laughs> <laughs> Summon allies to your call. <laughs> Elendil, the sword that was broken is now reforged. <laughs> this is the One Ring. One Ring to rule them all. <sighs> I love him. <laughs> sword of Gondor, wielded by my brother Boromir in the Siege of Minas Tirith. Wait, no, he wasn't there. He was dead by then. Whatever. The riders of Rohan. Swift. Deadly. Versus Leonidas and his 300 Spartans. Dead, <laughs> destined to die and fearless in the face of the Persian hordes. Oh, I'm about done. I'm about done bitching about fucking Deadliest Warrior. <laughs> it, it, it's just... A, I don't know why I keep watching this fucking show. Every time... Every single time I'm done watching that show, I go, that was the worst fucking show I've ever seen in my life! I try to watch it, and I, I, I try to watch it for the same reason I think most people do, and it's just to watch watch weapons carve up shit real good. <sighs> but still, it's hard to ignore. It's real damn hard to turn your brain off. And I'm just trying to sit there in a kind of comatose state, trying to watch it. I'm just watching for the fight scene. I'm just watching it. I love it for the fight scene. I'm just watching it for the brutality, and I'm st I, I can't turn it off. I, every two seconds, I'm going, "That's fucking." Stupid. You know what? I remember. That's I remember. Stupid. That's stupid. <laughs> it's all stupid. I remember what I was gonna say is the doctor's role. You know, how I kept saying he comes in, he's like, "Yeah, that guy's dead. That guy's dead." Well, that guy's role is completely pointless. Of course, all these guys are dead. They're, they're weapons. If I stab you with a knife, with a big knife, you're dead. If I stab you with a sword, you're dead. If I shoot you in the face with a shotgun, dead. So what I don't get is, why? If I hit you over that with a stick, you're probably dead. So I just don't get why this guy is around to tell me that these guys are dead. Of course they're dead. They're wielding weapons. That's why you carry a weapon. You wouldn't carry a weapon if it didn't, if it wasn't effective. You know, like, you wouldn't carry a fucking warhammer if it didn't make people dead. So, if a weapon wasn't any good, then it wouldn't have been used. So, I, I just don't, like, that's why I so desperately wanted some empirical data. They sometimes do this with, like, measuring the PSI of an impact. Like, blood force trauma from a hammer versus, like, brass knuckles or something like that. I mean, at least they're trying to put some numbers to it, but I just don't get the whole point of looking at an entry wound from a sword versus an entry wound from a hatchet in a guy's skull and going like, Psh, I can't believe how dead that guy is. That's, that, that's the point! You know, and, and they're, they're, when you're talking about weapons that don't kill you for weapons that are specifically designed not to kill you, they're not impressed. You know, like when the weapon, like like a rope or or a taser or a stinger grenade that is meant to subdue, they go, well, that didn't do any damage. Yeah, the SWAT versus GSG-9 both had like two uh, things that aren't designed to kill you. But will totally incapacitate you, you know. But for some reason they factored it into being deadliest. And so, I mean, that, that I, I, I get that they want to just compare weapons. I fully understand that. But at the same time, they don't do it well. They don't do it accurately with any kind of definitive proof. And it does a great disservice to the very notion 
of these guys, like the, their very tactics and and their artistry, you know, like the the way these guys would fight, or the the vehicles that they would employ, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. So, to, if if you want my advice to save yourself a lot of headache, just like uh, TiVo it and then skip to the last five minutes and watch that fight because it really is like <laughs> it makes up for like everything. Just, I, I loved watching the James Gang fight Al Capone. <laughs> it was so awesome. Um, oh, it's, oh, they're doing a video game. Did you see that? Yeah. They're, they're advertising the Deadliest Warrior video game, which I think they're just doing like a straight up uh, fighter, like a like Street Fighter type fighter. Yeah. Um, and if, that's going to be. I wonder how they're going to employ like uh, the three, like the trauma surgeon or the or the meathead, like <laughs> if they'll be like on the title screen or like the character select screen, like choose your warrior. Oh, the Apache, he's really deadly, but pussy, no armor. Like you know, just or or if we're able to choose people from like completely different eras of fighting, like uh, like Al Capone versus the Comanche. <laughs> but I'm still waiting for when they run out of all these these. I don't want to say legitimate ideas, when they finally go off the deep end and finally oh. start giving fan service, like, give us caveman versus astronaut. <laughs> I want that matter settled once and for all. That exactly my... <laughs> I was, I was, thank you for that, because I was leading into that. I am going to be starting a new video series. Called, I, I haven't decided what it's called yet, but, but like, Deadliest Fantasy Warrior or something like that. This is going to be my new series... And I'm going to do this every once in a while, where I am going to pit two fantasy characters against each other and determine who is deadliest. So I think what I'm going to do is, I, I think my first round, I'm going to pit, uh, I, I'm going to call in Kara as my expert, because he knows more than anyone else about this one side. My first round is going to be Mechagodzilla versus the Megazord from the Power Rangers. Who is deadliest? <laughs> and like, uh, uh, oh, who else did I have? I had, I, I, I prepared notes. Uh, fuck, oh, uh, kill time, hang on. I had notes. I'm no good by myself. Yeah, I'll be right there. Where is it? Hi. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I got it, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I had other ones. I had other ideas that I wrote down. I'm sorry about that. Um, I had uh, Sherlock Holmes versus the Terminator. Who is deadliest? Or uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Judge Dredd versus Bugs Bunny. Deadly. I still say Judge Dredd in the third round with a standard execution round to the back of his fucking bunny head. Yeah. Uh, the Fremen versus Aliens. <laughs> uh, I had the Ghostbusters against somebody. Who the fuck did I have Ghostbusters against? Uh, Green Lantern, I think. No, 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 no. I said I, I pitched that one, but I, I was that was stupid. Um, ah, <laughs> uh, well, fuck it. I, I I could do Ghostbusters against the Black Lanterns. That might be interesting. Uh, oh fuck, who was the Ghostbusters fighting? Uh, I at one time I said Ghostbusters versus the Army of Darkness, but you had oh you had uh, I had Ash versus Captain Kirk. Yeah, Ash versus Captain Kirk. <laughs> Which I dig. See, it's that kind of outside-the-box thinking that, that we need for Deadliest Fantasy Warrior. The phaser versus the boomstick. Yes! <laughs> Chainsaw arm versus the Kirk roll. <laughs> it's the du No, it's the Kirk chop. <laughs> well, well, would Kirk get the, uh, the, the Vulcan bladed weapon that it was when, when Spock had the Ponfar? No, I think his special weapon would be the, the giant cannon he makes. The oh, fight. the Gorn cannon. The yeah, Gorn yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannon. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's come on, that would never hold up against the boomstick. Well, it, uh, it's a special weapon. Like, he's got the phaser, he's got his Kirk chop, and then he's got the, the Gorn cannon, which he... Hey, yeah, well, well, he couldn't just bring the Enterprise to bear? Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, yes. <laughs> would he? Would he get the jet boots from? Uh, was it five Star Trek Five? See, I always bring up the jet boots because th they were established in Star Trek Five, and they never bring them up again. Jet boots. Spock had jet boots. Damn it! But yeah, I'm so gonna do this. Where like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna figure something out where I'm gonna get like experts from both sides of this thing, and I'm gonna be totally impartial. 
and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Linkara to argue the weapons of the Megazord, and I'm gonna find someone who knows shit about Mechagodzilla, and then we're gonna put them together, and I'll have like a fucking Flash animation where they fight. Yes. I don't think we got enough money for Flash animation. We may have to go back to toys. I can do toys. <laughs> <laughs> I will have the I will have fucking me one way or another. Mechagodzilla and Megazord will find out who is deadliest. I'm out of here. <laughs> I gotta get to work. <laughs>